93.1 megahertz. It's Radio XYZ and it is um, the Women's Week celebration. Uh, my name is Shamima Muslim Al Hassan. I'm not your regular host. Uh, Prince Minka is your regular host, but this week we have sucked all the men from the <laughs> studio. We have told them to go and sin no more. Whilst we're taking over okay. and we're we are celebrating and inspiring women. So it's Women's Week on uh, Radio XYZ. And my guest has been um, Mrs. Mauna Treba, who has been speaking to us about women and entrepreneurship and business. She's been giving us some insights into the challenges, the opportunities as well, and how women can position themselves to make it to the top. Most importantly, stay at the top and make some money and have some fun along the way. Absolutely. You know, it's all possible within Absolutely. our reaches. In the Absolutely. Right. Let me just tie in our third issue that we had planned to uh, talk about. It's uh, prioritizing education of children. I think it just goes into what we're talking about. Sure. Apparently over the weekend, the gender minister had um, said that cocoa farmers, it was a specific message to right. the cocoa growing communities, right. uh, should prioritize their children's education and desist from using them as laborers on their farms. Of course, we know that there's been some international reports that um, cited Ghana as yes. one of the countries that was quite endemic for using child labor on cocoa farms. Right. And it even affected our cocoa yeah. or some yeah. sort. Yeah. Right. According to the gender minister, the core responsibility of every parent was to send their children to school, protect them from harm, abuses, child marriage, child trafficking, kaya and child prostitution, and not to engage them in hard labor. She was speaking at the 2017 Mondelez. Hey, it's, it's this, this kind of language. Sometimes you don't pronounce the Z or whatever it was, but there's a C, Z at, an, at the end. Close so enough. something more, whatever. International Cocoa Life Learning Conference on the theme Women Empowerment. The Mondelez, again, International Cocoa Life Strategy for Sustainable Cocoa Production right. in Ghana. So, well, this might be a specific ma- message to the cocoa community. Com- growing community but i think it's a reflection of what happens in most rural areas there's right. still quite a bit of you know um underrepresentation of children yes. in schools right. they're not coming to school they're not staying in school and they're not going through the entire education cycle especially for the primary level should yes. it be a core duty of parents or government and policy has a role to play well i mean i think we, there, there's there's universal agreement that um everyone has a certain level of responsibility when it comes to issues around education. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly in our social cultural context, we recognize that it is not an individual who educates a child. It's a community that educates right. a child. I, I, I do think it is important to be mindful of the farming practices that have always included children in our communities, even before the onset of formal education. Mm-hmm. And so it, even as we look to encourage that sort of thing and ensure that children have the exposure to an education that creates opportunities for them, uh, we don't necessarily uh, label every situation in which you Le- find child a child as, as child labor. I think that's one of the conversations that is also ongoing. And so but some work is good for a child. Well, I mean, I, I, I certainly am a firm mm. believer in that. I think almost any mother will tell you that if she's raising a giant, <laughs> she wants to make sure that that child knows how to be responsible for mm-hmm. themselves and knows how to take care of themselves and others around them. Right. And that's something that you start being taught right from the beginning. So um, I would well imagine that even as the minister made those interventions, uh, they're obviously situated in our own social cultural Mm -hmm. context. And we want to make sure that in much the same way in rural America, in rural uh, United Kingdom, where children do go to farms, they have chores, they have responsibilities. Uh, it's not frowned upon. I- if our children are engaged in, in fact, same, the Amish in America don't correct. even go to school. Correct. They have homeschooling. They have their own uh, system by which they educate their children, and they're not 
penalized for it. So perhaps we will continue to have the conversation that takes that broader view of how we support people in our rural communities to have access to the kind of education that gives the children choices. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily about whether or not they ever appear on a farm right. or they, they, they gather eggs or they, they help to milk the cow or whatever it is, but they have the opportunity to uh, access education that their counterparts perhaps in other places so talk about uh, access that i guess that's where policy comes in so right. um, the constitution enjoins that government and states must provide free affordable accessible universal primary education yes. so uh, naturally every child should be in school but not every child should be in school so okay should there be enf enforcement mechanisms? How about the other barriers of costs? Right. You know, so some parents can afford Correct. to to send their children Correct. to school. Correct. So Shamima, there's the reality of the development dilemma. Mm -hmm. That that's that's what I call it. That we we have to face up to we have to contend with the reality is that any well-meaning parent would like to see their child in school and educated, but they have to make the choice between having one square meal for everybody and therefore having that child engaged in some form of, of, of work as opposed to sending them off to school, mm -hmm. if even the resources are available. So until such time that we're able to address those development issues that will create commerce mm -hmm. for people in rural communities, again, I go back to the subject <laughs> of agriculture, mm -hmm. then we have the opportunity to say, because the commercial opportunities available, your income levels have improved so you can make a better choice mm -hmm. towards educating your child or giving them access to education. In addition, the infrastructure and the resources that create a learning experience for the child so that they can expand their knowledge base yeah. is actually there. So we all know very well that the infrastructure in rural communities for schools is not where it should be by any standard. The educational tools, the learning tools are simply not there. Sometimes so, they have to go very long distance to absolutely. access the nearest school absolutely. for primary. So. Absolutely. So, so that's the reality. Um, and addressing those head on then creates the opportunity to say, look, um, from a governance standpoint, these resources have been made available. So now we're in a position to really start to enforce um, but I think that in this period of what I would hope is transition mm -hmm. in addressing some of those issues, we'll be able to identify real tangible commercial opportunities so that people are able to engage in Maybe trade. Maybe that's where the one so district, on. one factory <coughs> idea comes. If it's really operationalized and you can actually have income generating, uh, you know, facilities or industries, whether they are small, medium or even large scale, it presupposes that opportunities should come for, you know, young people, even old men and women my, in the my, community. My, my, my hope, well my, 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 yes, my hope, my expectation is that uh, Ghanaians actually have an international reputation as merchants mm -hmm. on this continent. And, Tapping into the opportunities for enterprise, whether it be industry, whether it be the services sector, whether it is developing some new product or some, some new technology, we can look at rural communities where, for instance, land is, is significantly uh, more in, in terms of abundance and availability as an option and an opportunity to begin an, a, a commercial venture, right. as opposed to congregating ourselves in all of the urban built up areas. It's really about access. So if the roads aren't good, then obviously you don't want to locate your business there, but is it an enterprise that potentially can expand so that you can then get, because I know of some entrepreneurs, for instance, who have engaged in rice production in more rural parts of the country. And because of the nature of the enterprise and how, how it has grown, government decided to come in and say, look, we will make the roads more accessible or we will ensure that there's more reliable power right. in these communities. So, again, you see the, the partnership between enterprise, between government, between the citizenry so that you're pushing an agenda where people, as I said, can make choices um, and say, I don't need to have my child selling whilst I go to the farm. 
uh, I will be able to send that child to school, school. because my income status well, has it's improved. supposed to be free, but you know, <laughs> it's really, really not free because they have to. So, well, some of these social, other social interventions, the free meals were all right. supposed to right. get attract children to come to school because to, even to feed the child it's, was it's, a problem. To give a him a problem. talking to you know get to school that's right was a problem right. you know and but don't forget that there are a lot of people who came from very humble beginnings who yeah, because a small opportunity was created for them today they're titans in business and they are proud of their ability to overcome those obstacles i, I certainly believe those types of stories need to be told more and more and uh, as we celebrate women's week obviously um, with a lot of the focus on women, I, I do believe that education still remains a shared responsibility, um, whether it's in the domestic environment. Mm. There are certain things that a mother will bring to the table, the perspective she brings in raising or educating her child. her child that only she can bring to the table in much the same way only a father can bring a certain perspective. And it doesn't necessarily have to be biological parents, but you know, Flushed that male female balance. And then obviously what the public school system offers in terms of education uh, and then what government does to, to, to create the enabling environment. For me, it's very much a team effort. Right. Let me take a few messages as well. Um, this one says, my name is Alice Mamaga, the program's coordinator for VFL Ghana. And Mrs. Trevor is my director. She is indeed an awesome leader with great experiences to share with young women like myself. She inspires me a lot. Mrs. Trevor, thank you for all the great advice. That's very and kind. And what do you do when you get that feedback? Um, when you know you're being impactful and people are recognizing that. It's, it's very humbling for me. Because when I, I think about the path that I originally thought I was going to chart mm -hmm. for myself, uh, I never assumed, I mean, I hoped that I would be um, a positive, you know, role model at some point professionally. But I, I guess there's always a tremendous amount of humility that goes with hearing those things. So what next? We're just about wrapping up now. <laughs> what next for Mrs. Trevor? Where should we be? seeing and viewing you in the next five years would you do would you come into public life in terms of what you do politics it's usually the next to leave you know <laughs> now let's sit at the table of power let's you know let's contribute to, to how the cake the national cake will, will be shared that's really where the power is show me my uh, i was inclined to say watch this space uh -huh. but i i it's you Still so <laughs> it's you it's you so i'll say a little bit more than that i mean i think that my experiences in the public sector as well as the private sector have reinforced my personal notion that if you're given any opportunity to serve take it with both hands and I will not shy away from the next potential opportunity, whether it is in the private sector or in the public sector to serve, because I really have had such powerful experiences, uh, the ups and the downs, all powerful in shaping who I am today mm -hmm. and what I believe hopefully I can offer to mm -hmm. to those around me, uh, to those who are not so close to me. And even to those who may have their doubts about <laughs> what a woman can do <laughs> in a leadership role. Wrong. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I will, I will not hesitate to pursue that, that opportunity, but obviously, um, I'll continue to want to stay balanced in, um, what I do so that I can be a happy individual, uh, who can meet the necessary. Any advice on how to sanitize our political discourse? which seems quite partisan yes. these days. I, I would say focus on the issues. Um, we, we, we sadly have become quite personalized in the quality of the commentary uh, that often uh, goes along with any political discussion. Uh, I think that's rather sad. Um, I would hope that if we can focus on the issues, there will be, areas where there will be a meeting of minds and hopefully that will allow us to be much more dispassionate so that we can actually deliver clear results 
So at some point, Ghanaians will be able to say, this was this is your performance report. Mm -hmm. This is what you were able to deliver. Mm -hmm. These are the resources that came on board as a result of your time in this leadership role. And for me, I'm 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 hopeful. I'm optimistic because I'm Ghanaian. Well, that's the only thing we should be able to hope because of all the places like Stephen Hawking says, uh, you know, renowned physicist yes. of all the places we could be yes. on this earth yes. here and now. This Absolutely. is what, in fact, in this universe, Absolutely. this earth, this space here now is where we are. Absolutely. So we can only make the best of the situation. Absolutely. Great conversations happen As when you always. meet great people. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so very They're much. Fabulous. Thank you very much. So that was Mrs. Mauna Treba. I hope that, uh, you know, your personal value has just been shut up from this conversation <laughs> and that you would actually take that step and, 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 and do something, you know, serve, leave a mark on the sun of time. At least that when you're gone, it will be said of you, here lies one who actually made an impact um, in her generation or his generation. So that's how I'm about wrapping up my session today on uh, the XYZ Women's Week. Thank, um, right. So let me just say a few thank yous. I would have to, first of all, thank the organizers for identifying us <laughs> thank you <laughs> to kickstart this week it's yes. an honor it's a big you honor. know thank we are enablers so <laughs> yes thank you so, so much so to xyz uh, management thanks for the invite um it's really been exciting to to sit behind the mark uh, the mic after such a long break i i hope that i i met your expectation and also thanks to Prince Minka, the host, the regular host of the show, and who actually also called me and took me through, <laughs> reminded me of the ropes. Uh, the the producer of the show was his name. Um, that uh, da 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 da. Where is it? Okay, so I have. I don't have that. That some brilliant young gentleman <laughs> who who really was very very helpful uh, to me. And um, Kojo Apia, he is. So Kojo Apia, Prince Minka, Kelvin, Asante, the entire ladies production team, including the TV crew, um, those that came over to my home for wow. the promotional video. Bina, it is, who contacted me right. uh, first. So thank you all. And thanks to the listeners as well who made time and also joined the conversation. We're truly, truly grateful. So this is just today. Tomorrow, there's another wonderful voice you haven't heard for a while who will be coming through. So, and th that's what we're going to be doing. We are, we are releasing old voices that you have missed. They will be coming through and hosting your favorite uh, programs on Radio XYZ and on TV as well. My name is Shamima Muslima Hassan. Many thanks for your time. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now. <laughs>